All right, what's going on, Yelani? We got 546 here. Water flows as two free jets from the T attached to the pipe shown. So the exit speed is 15 meters per second, and if viscous effects and gravity are negligible, determine the X and Y components of the force that the pipe exerts on the T. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so like always, right, knowns. We got water, right? So density of water is a thousand ten meters. So it's kilograms per meter cubed. Um, they gave us areas, so that's cool. It saves us some pi r squared formulas, one meter squared. A2 is equal to 0 0.3 meters squared. A3 is equal to 0 0.5 meters squared. They gave us two velocities, so let's label this 0 0.1, right? 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So we got V2 at 15 meters per second. V3 at... 15 meters per second as well. Uh, what else? They did say that something about the the pressure, right? Um, free jets. That's right. Free jets. So that means P2 is zero, P3 is zero. So those are keywords you got to look out for. P and that's gauge, right? Gauge. P3 is equal to zero gauge. There we go. Um, this is our coordinate system, right? X, Y. And we got to find another anchoring force problem, pretty much. Uh, the X and Y components. So there's a force acting, let's assume this way in the X direction. Let's assume positive in the Y direction on the T. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram to see what it is we'll need to solve the problem. So this is what the system looks like. Kind of like that, right? Um, well, it has a little bit of a curve to it here, but that's fine. We got pressure acting at the inlet right here, right? There we go. We got another pressure acting at the outlet here. Okay, we got pressure at this outlet. Cool, so let's go ahead and label that. That is P1, A1, P2, A2, P3, A3. Um, what else? All right, the flow rates. So velocity is traveling in this direction, right? Um, velocity is traveling up this way here. It's outlet, right? And it's going this way here, V3. Okay, cool. So we have all the areas, so that's cool. We need P1, right? Because when we do the summation of forces and the momentum, we need P1A1. So we need to find P1. We need to find V1 too, right? We have the two velocities here, but not this one. And that's about it. So just these two, that one and that one. So um, just off the bat, right? Remember, mass is conserved. So what that means is, this was actually step two. Hold on. Step three. Mass is conserved. So that means in anything that goes in equals everything that goes out. So M1 is equal to M2 plus M3. That's what that means. Density is constant, so that just means Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3. And that means... 
area one v one is equal to area two v two plus area three v three. Right, that's just a formula. All right, um, we have everything except v one. So if you plug in the numbers, um, you will get V1 is equal to 12 meters per second. So we found V1. Now to find the pressure at point one, we could do a Bernoulli equation from this point to this point, right? This is our datum line, our reference. So Bernoulli, from one, two, three. Okay. We got P1 plus one half rho V1 squared plus rho G H1 um, is equal to P3 plus one half rho V three squared plus rho G H three. So P one, we're looking for it, right? P three, that's zero. We got velocity one, that is 12, right? We just found it. Um, v three, they gave it to us, that's 15. We got height one, is right on the datum line, and so is height three. So cool, this cancels out. This cancels out, P3 cancels out, and we should be good. So P1 plus one half rows a thousand times V1 squared, that's 12 squared is equal to one half times a thousand density times 15 squared. Awesome, so we got all that. So if we do the math, we will get P1 plus 72,000 is equal to 112,500. Okay, so P1 will equal 40,500 Newton per meter squared. Cool, so we got that one. All right, so now that we have the pressure, we have the velocities, um, we could go ahead and do the linear momentum. So let's go to step five. We could do the X or Y first, it doesn't matter. I always like to start off with Y for some reason. So the sum of the forces in the Y direction equal the sum of the mass flow rates in the Y direction. So, oh, that's right, we forgot the, the forces here. So we're assuming there's a force in the positive X and there's a force in the positive Y. And this is our conventional system, right? There you go. So, forces in the Y, um, we got negative P2A2, right? It's going down. Plus FY because um, we're assuming positive. Um, and that's the only thing on this side that's going to equal the flow rates, the mass flow rate, in the or the linear momentum in the y direction. And that's only this one, the V2 one. So that is rho A2. Now it's an outlet, so V2 is positive, and it is in the positive y direction. So this one's positive, two positives. Again, outlets are positive, inlets are negative. And positive y direction is positive, negative y direction is negative. So that's how you determine the signs here. Uh, P2 is zero, cool, so this cancels out. So we're left with Fy is equal to a thousand times area of two, 0 0.3 times V2 which is 15 meters per second, 15 meters per second. Um, do the math here. You will get F of Y is equal to 
67,500 newtons and positive. So that means we assumed correctly. It's going up. And that is the first part of the answer. Now we got to find the, the x one. So step six, sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to the sum of the linear momentum in the x direction. So we got positive P1A1, negative P3A3, positive x, f of x. So we got P1A1 minus P3A3 um, plus f of x. That's everything on the x side for forces. Now we got this linear momentum here and the linear momentum here, those two. So we got rho A1, it's an inlet, so it's negative E1. Then it's a positive x direction, so it's positive E1. Plus we got rho A3 now, and that is an outlet. So that is positive V3, and it is in the positive mm, x direction. So right there, positive V3. All right, so we can go ahead and well, actually, hold on. P3 is zero, right? So that goes away. And that's about it. So P1, we found out in step four, was 40,500. A1 is one meter squared, right? Up. So plus F of X equals a thousand times A1. And then V1 is negative 12 found here times 12 plus a thousand density times A3, which is, oh, Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I thought this was pressure. No, no, no. You're right. So 0 0.5. I was about to plug in 0 for A3, but <clears throat> it didn't make sense. Uh, 0 0.5. And then V3 is 15. Then 15 again. So those are the numbers plugged in. Simplify more. You will get 40,500. Let me move it up plus f of x is equal to negative 144,000, right? Because the negative here, plus 112,500. All right, do the math. You will get f of x is equal to negative 72,000 newtons. And that means going this way, right? So positive and that just means f of x is equal to 72,000 newtons going this way so that's all it is man um or woman yelani right <laughs> but the tricky thing here was being creative with it so obviously when you do your free body diagram, that tells you what you need to have before you start doing some of the forces in the y and x for these, these two equations. Um, we didn't have v1, we didn't have p1. So finding velocities when you have all areas, and I guess in this case, two velocities, that was easy. Um, you know, mass is conserved, so that means flow rates equal. It's all steady flow, pretty much. Um, and then p1, that one you had to be creative and go back to Bernoulli just to see that but um other than that this one could be a midterm problem or a final exam problem because you kind of incorporate uh two subjects into one problem so really study this problem and you'll be all right